but the next fly I want to do is this one right here. It is the Thunderhead, which is like it has an Adam's body. It's got the um, the dark dark hackle to it. This stuff right here. So um, this is a Whiting Farms uh, cape. I'm sorry, saddle uh, pro grade. And this is the dark furnace. I think the color is. So let's do it. We're gonna start off with a size 12 hook, which a lot of times when I fish this fly, I fish it with a dropper. I fish most of my fly my dry flies with a dropper. It's a rarely ever that I actually fish a dry fly without a dropper on it, without dropping a midge or a nymph or something like that. Um, most of the time when I'm fishing subsurface, I'm nymph fishing or something like that. I'll use a dropper, um, I, I'll use a dry fly instead of a um, strike indicator. A lot of fly fishermen always talk about, oh, I had flies, I had trout biting everywhere and they were coming up, they hit my strike indicator, but they wouldn't hit the nymphs or whatever like that. Well, you know, put a, put a hook on your strike indicator, or better yet, you know, use a stimulator uh, or, you know, some other fly. A lot of times I'll fish a humpy instead of a, um, uh, Instead of a strike and a kid, I'll fish a humpy or a stimulator or a big elk hair caddis, you know, something like that. So what we're going to do is, is uh, where's my black? Thread? I'll take her my lamp. Okay. So this is black. This is uh, UTC 70. I love the UTC threads because you can really lay them out flat if you have to. So I'm going to start, oh, got to tangle it up. Start right at the three quarter point up to the head. Work your way back. And then come back forward. So, and then back again. The reason I go back, forth, and back is because, like I said before, I make my flies to fish with them. So I want a good thread body. Yeah. And I use uh, UTC 70 because um, it's really strong, but it's also pretty thin. So here I got my elk hair. But not a big patch, only like that much. And I'm gonna thin most of this out. Um, this is one of those flies where you're actually gonna want some long fibers. And make sure you use a good elk hair. I've gotten bad elk hair patches before. Oh, this is bleached, by the way, this is bleached. Um, I've gotten ba bad elk hair before. And don't use this, this is yearling elk hair. Um, this is good only for like, uh, your small elk hair caddises, uh, caddis patterns. Um, you don't want to use that because it's it's too thin and it'll, your tail will break off and also your tail will fray out and too much. You'll have, a, well, you'll have like a really wide tail instead of that cone shape that you're looking for. You'll have like a really wide tail. So, and like I said, I'm just gonna thin this out. What you do is once you stack it, grab the very back, just those long fibers, and pull out, and you'll get these short fibers that you really don't want. I'll do that one more time. You only look about, looking for about a dozen fibers or so. Get all those out. Okay. So you're only looking for about a half hook length. Maybe the gap of the hook will probably suffice. And then I like to spin my thread just to tighten those, tighten it up some. And then you're gonna pull out some of those loose ones that I get. Okay. So you're gonna pinch it, go around, and make sure you pinch on tight, and then give that thing a spin real quick. And then you're going tighter, and then start working your way down the hook, touch and turns. Don't let go until you get about that far. And I got one little fiber right here that's giving me a hard time. Get it short enough. Okay. Go about a third of the hook length. Pull them all up tight. Get some curved scissors if you got some. If not, you can use straight ones and then snip it off. And then just use your hook, clean, use your thread to clean it up a little bit. 
you don't have to hide everything, but hide as much as you can. Go all the way up to the head of the hook and then work your way back right there. Get back a little further, okay. Now for the, um, the wings, you can use calf tail. This is a calf tail. Uh, you can use this stuff. It's good for parachutes. I like, I use it for my parachute items, stuff like that, and other my par uh, parachute style flies. It's real curly, thick stuff. But if you're gonna do something like a wolf pattern where you want those really thick, bushy wings, you can't go wrong with calf body hair. It's a lot easier to work with. It's a lot easier to stack. It's just hard to cut. What I what usually I do when I cut it is I take my scissors, insert my scissors about as much as I want, and then pull back. And whatever you want is gonna stick straight up. It's better to do it on a flat surface though. And then it doesn't have much in the under fur. Usually instead of like under fur, it's more like a short fiber so you're trying to get rid of. Dropping your stacker. You really want to stack the hell out of it. All your calf fur is kind of uh, curly stuff, but that's what you end up with. <coughs> Switch hands. Okay. This stuff gets messy. Tie it on. Pinch. Loop. Pinch. Loop. Pinch. Loop. And then really bind it down. Because if you don't, when you go to cut it, it'll slip out on you. And then one quick snip. You're gonna have some loose fibers. I got some sticking up right there. You can see. Just kind of bind them down some. Now work your way back, touch and turns. You're gonna cover all that stuff up. And then at first you don't want to pinch, you don't want to make your turns too tight because if you do, You'll actually start working back right here and you'll end up spitting the hair out the front of the hook. Which is something, it's, it happens. Sometimes you'll have to redo the wing twice. You know, especially when you first try. Which is why it's good to always start on a bigger hook so you can really get used to everything. And then work your way back up to the front, take your thumbnail, find the hook of the, uh, uh, hook of the eye of the hook, or just pull them all back, it works a little better. And then you're gonna really build up I'm gonna make a real tall wing on this one because like I said I'm gonna use this as a dropper as an indicator and I really like a big tall wing because it's a little easier to see go ahead and split your split your fibers do the little figure eight Okay, and then I'm gonna post them. Now when I tie my wolf flies, I don't like my wings to go straight up. The reason you're tying wings is because you want that shadow. And also if you tie them flaying out a little bit flatter, it'll help your fly land hook, uh, the hook with the hook facing down like it's supposed to. And you're going to have some loose fiber sticking out in places. I mean, that's just part of wolf flies. They do that. But now you see I got these big bushy wings on there. So then, okay. Now it's time to work on the dubbing for the body. Remember to pinch down. When you're tying this elk hair in, pinch down really tight at the tail. That way you have a good tapered body when you can dub it. Now, traditionally, Adams is done with muskrat fur, but I hate time with that stuff because it's so hard to get it to lay flat. You end up with really bushy bodies, and um, you end up having them. You know, you're trying to separate a lot of the mask fur out of them and hair. There's not like dubbing. Natural dubbing is made with um, uh, under fur of animals, and a lot of times you end up getting that actual hair clippings in there which is not what you want so i'm just going to do you can see I, I don't i don't dub down all the way on the thread i'll show you why in a second because once you get that right there done you can pull it tighter go again pull oh got caught in the wing 
spin a little more. Okay. Round, pull, spin, pull, spin, pull, spin. And then we'll start working. Came up a little bit short, add a little bit more. If you're ever short on dubbing, you don't have to back your thread back off and then start again. That's not necessary. And I'm also, I always try to dub through the wings if I have a little extra there. And just help the color follow through. Okay, now we're gonna get a hackle feather. And um, so you can do it by eye, but I traditionally use hackle gauge. Don't ever put the hackle gauge on your vice. I mean, unless you really, really want to. I like to have it so I can take it to my saddle. Tell me, judge, I'm not big enough. Not big enough. It's perfect. Now on these wolf flies, because you have such a big bulge in the middle of the body from where they're tied in the wing, go about a hackle size down. So this is a 12, I'm gonna use a size 14 hackle. So tie that in and then start hackling the fly. And I hackle, if I'm gonna make a fly for um, a dropper like this one, I'm gonna hackle a piss out of it. Sometimes it might help if you kinda use the vise like it's made to. Okay, like that. Now if you're like me, and you like to hackle the absolute piss out of your flies like this one. It's kind of hard to do those final wraps and tie everything down without catching a couple of fibers. So get your half hitch tool and get the, the size that will just barely fit over the hook eye. So here's, here's your half hitch tool and it'll barely fit over the hook eye. If you have like a dubbing needle like this one, you always have the half hitch tool at the very bottom. But I wanna use this one and then barely fit over the hook eye. Then once you do that, hold your thread and just give your fly one, two, three turns real quick. And that's gonna bind all that hackle back so that you can finally come in here and do your whip finish. And I always do my whip finish before I cut my hackle off. You just get a, a couple extra turns on the hackle, helps hold it in better. And then we're gonna varnish, put some head cement on there with your dubbing needle that's all caked up with resin. a thunderhead it's a great way if you ever have a you know you can always use this for uh, fast moving water in cases where you'd want to use an Adams but it's a little fast and you're having a hard time seeing it you can use one of these um, you can also use it as a dropper fly like I said this is what I end up doing most of the time and a um, little durable great fly anyway thanks for watching